And let's take our Bible. Campbell, you are so the selected for blessing. And it's here in your free book. Selected for blessing. And it's here in your free book. The reason for going into this kind of message is that God has made up his mind to answer some people's prayer. Heaven has concluded that whether the enemy likes it or not, some people will just have to be mightily blessed. And I am number one. I don't know about you. Selected for blessing. I'm going to read three scriptures. The first one is in John chapter 15. John 15. Verse 16. Statement from the mouth of Jesus. He said, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Not only that, I ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Why? So that whatsoever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. He says, you have not chosen me. I am the one that has chosen you. And after choosing you, I also ordained you. And the reason for all this is so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, He will give it to you. And that includes blessings. Now, in First Peter chapter two, a very popular scripture. In First Peter chapter two, let us read verse nine. First Peter two nine. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He said, you are a chosen generation. If you are not chosen, then you cannot be a royal priesthood. If you are not chosen, you cannot be a holy nation. If you are not chosen, you cannot be a peculiar people. If you are not chosen, you cannot show his praises. You are chosen to be a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Peculiar means someone that is special. You see that aura of speciality on them. When they talk, you see it clearly. 
when they walk, you see that they are special. Anywhere they go, you see that thing on them. That this particular person is not like us. There is something different about this person. All that comes into your life, if you have been chosen, if you are chosen, now, in the book of Psalm 65, Psalm 65, I read verse 4, Psalm 65, Verse 4. It says, Blessed is the man whom thou choosest. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest. That is, the man that you have chosen is a blessed man. If you have not chosen that man, then it's a cursed man. Blessed is the man whom thou hast chosen. And caused to approach unto thee that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. Selected for blessing. The first point is this. And write it down if you are writing something, write it down in capital letter. When God chooses a man to bless him, all his shortcomings becomes irrelevant. If you are writing that, write in the capital letter. And please, let it stick to your innermost being. When God chooses a man to bless him, all his shortcomings, all his disadvantages, all his inadequacies becomes irrelevant. Moses. Moses gave 11 excuses why he cannot be a blessing to the children of Israel. 11 different excuses. Those disadvantages in his life, his shortcomings. But with all that, God did not listen to him. Why? He had been choosing to be blessed by God. There is somebody here this morning. Just like God selected Moses for his blessing for his power for his anointing the power of God will locate you this morning for his blessings please follow me as I go because as this word is coming out you will notice that something is dropping on you dropping on you dropping on you and that thing is called the oil of gladness the oil of gladness to select means to be carefully choosing it means to be preferred above preferred above others it means to nominate someone it means to adopt it means to hand pick just pick the person out to select means to appoint it means to sort out 
God began to search and search and search. Eventually, he found the person. Just like David in Psalm 89. See, I have found David my servant. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. To, to be searched out. Sought out. To select also means to elect. To elect. It's like God voting for the person. To select means to single out. Listen very carefully. Please listen to this. There are people that run after blessings. They look for it. They pray for it. They cry for it. They search for it. They labor and labor and labor for it. In fact, in fact they fast for it. These people, sometimes they don't get the blessing. And sometimes they get the blessing. They are not sure. It's not certain. But there are some people. It is a blessing that is searching for them. It is a blessing that is looking for them around. They will not search for it. They will not fast for it. They will not shout. They will not labor. They will just sit down somewhere. And then the blessing will just locate them. If you are among those that the blessing will locate here today, shout a big Amen. There are various examples in the Bible. The blind Bartimaeus. The Bible says he sat on the road of Jericho. And he heard that Jesus was passing by. Then he started. Jesus, son of David, I need your blessing. Jesus, Son of David, answer me. He cried. He shouted. He begged. In fact, they told him, keep quiet. And Jesus said, okay, bring him here. That was on the road of Jericho. But on the same road of Jericho, there was a man too who did not shout. He did not scream. Zacchaeus by name. He only climbed the sycamore tree. Nobody knew that he was there. Jesus was passing by. He didn't shout. He didn't scream. He didn't say, Jesus, I am here, I am here. Jesus himself went to where he was. And he said, Zacchaeus, come down. Today, 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 salvation has entered into your house. That is blessing, favor, power, everything has entered into your house. And who was this Zacchaeus? A raw sinner. A chief. A tax collector. When he went, when Jesus went to his house and was eating and drinking, the Pharisees and the Sadducees they questioned the integrity of Jesus. Say, say, look at this Jesus going to the house of this sinner to eat. The money that Zacchaeus stole, 
was the same money that is used to prepare food for Jesus. The Bible is deep. Jesus defended him. After the whole thing, when he discovered that this Jesus that is not talking about what I have done, I have to restitute. Say, Jesus, all those that have taken money from firstly, I am going to repay them back fourfold. Here was a task collector with boldness saying that he will restore to the people fourfold of what he has stolen. And yet, financially, it didn't go down. It is for you to know that that man is a real chief. But the point is this. Jesus went searching for him. I am praying for somebody here today now. Where you are, the blessings of the Lord will locate you by fire. Nobody is supporting iniquity. Nobody is saying that I should be stealing. But what we are saying is this. When God chooses a man for his blessing, all those things become irrelevant. A friend, a brother called his friend. So I have been pursuing this contract. And I have been told to come and defend my presentation. So this friend followed this, our brother. When they got there, they met this big man, the owner of this big company. But our brother just noticed <laughs> that this big man is not talking to him. Just talking to the friend. The friend is a member of this ministry. But this brother is not a member. But he's also a Christian. And this big man just started talking to this our friend. I like your dress. I like the way you smile. Uh, but what, what do you do? What do you do? He told him. Uh, something is telling me to give you something. Oh. Let me give you a contract. He was shocked. Because it's like the person that he came with. It was totally abandoned. So then, I, I, I know that you don't have money, but I'm also going to finance the contract for you. Beloved, before that, our brother left that place that day. 200 million naira contract was given to him. There are people that run after blessing. And there are people that blessing run after them. If your amen can be so loud now, before the end of this year, the blessings of the Lord will locate your head. Let your amen rule the God. Now, it is important for us to know 
that being rich is not the same thing as being blessed. It is good to clear that. You can be rich and not be blessed. You can be known and influential and not be blessed. By heaven's definition, money is not a sign of blessing. It's not. There are so many rich people around. But who are far away from his blessing. You can be rich and not be blessed. But you cannot be blessed and not be rich. You can be rich and not be blessed. But you cannot be blessed and not be rich. Heroes of faith in the Bible, they do not labor for riches. They do not pursue wealth. Rather, they desire to be blessed. The prayer of Jacob is, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Not, I will not let you go unless you make me rich. Money is good. But it's not a sign that you are blessed. In fact, the Bible says money can fail. Genesis 47, verse 15. It says, And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, money failed completely. But blessing can never fail. Remember Joseph? That slave guy. When Joseph got to the house of Potiphar, he didn't go there with one cover. In fact, he was a slave boy. But when he went there, he went there with the blessing upon his head. And because of that blessing upon the head of Joseph, a slave, the Bible says, and God blessed the house of Potiphar for Joseph's sake. And the blessings of the Lord was upon all that they had in the house. And in the field. A carrier of blessing will always turn to be a blessing. There is somebody here today now. That's your head. We carry the oil of blessing. If that prayer is for you, say a loud amen. Let that amen send the enemy back to the hellfire. Are you following me, please? It is not all that comes before the Lord that can receive His touch. It is not all. It is not all that come to meet with the Lord that the Lord will meet. People will come to meet with the Lord and the same Lord will avoid them like a plague. And this is very strange. Sometimes, when prayers are going on, and God opens the eyes, you see the angels. They will come, stand on a road, look at people praying, avoid the first person, the second person, and then touch the third person, touch the fourth person. Sometimes they will look at the road, Nobody is touched. Do for somebody else. And we have all come to meet the Lord. If God meets you, 
or you meet God, the evidence will show. Even demons too, they will know. There is a strange scripture in Isaiah 65 verse 1. Isaiah 65 verse 1. It is a very strange scripture. It says, God said, I am sort of them that ask me not. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. What is strange scripture? Another passion of the scripture says, He said, I reveal myself to those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. I said, Here I am, here I am to a nation that did not call my name. What, what a strange God. What a strange scripture. There is a principle in the Bible called divine selection. Divine selection. It is a principle that you will see over and over and over in the Bible. Abel was selected above Cain. Abraham was selected above Terah, his father. They were both idol worshippers. But God just abandoned the father and went for the son. If you ask me up to today, why did God run after Abraham? I don't know. Principle of divine selection. Isaac was selected above Ishmael. Even though Ishmael was the firstborn, David was selected above his brother. All of them came forward to be anointed by Prophet Samuel. But the man that was selected was not allowed. Do you know what the prophet said? He said, we shall not sit down until he comes. Those that God selects for his blessing, men will always honor them. So we will not sit down. We will have to remain standing until this boy arrives. Heaven will select you for his blessings. <laughs> That's your amen. Lack vitamin. Joseph was selected above his brother. Principle of divine selection. Solomon was selected above Absalom. A child of adultery and fornication. The widow of Zarephath was selected above other widows in Israel. See, there are so many of them. But God did not send Elijah to anyone except this widow of Zarephath. She was selected. Divine principles in the Bible. Jacob was selected above Esau. Mary, Maria, the mother of Jesus, was selected above other virgins in Israel. She was not the only virgin, but she was selected. Principle of divine selection. 
The man by the pool of Bethsaida was selected above all other sick people that were waiting for the moving of the water. Jesus saw many of them there. He bypassed them. He didn't look at their pain. He bypassed them. He didn't look at their disease. He bypassed them. Just went straight to only one man. And after the miracle, he disappeared again. The principle of divine selection. Hear me, my brother. Hear me, my sister. Before the end of this year, the blessings of the Lord will select you. No, 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 no. When God selects a man for his blessing, all the visible and invisible forces will begin to work in his favor. When God selects a person for his blessing, long time problems and trouble will just expire. When God selects a man for his blessing, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the book of remembrance will just be open for his sake. The book of remembrance. That was what happened to Joseph in the prison. He was suddenly remembered by the man that had forgotten him. And within 24 hours, a prisoner became a ruler. It does not take God time to change your story to glory. It only takes divine selection. Everyone hearing the sound of my voice now, by the power that established this ministry, among your family members, among your friends, in your place of work, even in that your compound, blessing will locate you. In the name of Jesus. There is a book called the Book of Remembrance. The Book of Remembrance. Malachi 3.16 talks about the Book of Remembrance. Inside that Book of Remembrance, are well documented your miracles, your breakthroughs, the promises that you have claimed before that are yet to manifest. All the prophecies that have been spoken into your life that are yet to be fulfilled. Your book of remembrance is a book of the good things that you have done. The kindness that you have shown that are yet to be rewarded. Your book of remembrance contains your journey to the place of abundance. I hear this. This book of remembrance is in the hands of only one person. And that person is the Almighty God. So when you are selected for his blessing, he calls for the book of remembrance to be open. Somebody's book of remembrance is about to be open now. If you are that person, say a threefold amen. I didn't hear your voice at all. 
heaven is waiting for your voice now. Let your amen send the enemy back to hellfire. Just like I said, some they will key in into the flow of this anointing. And things will begin to happen. But others will say, well, just let us take it easy. And then they miss. What are the things that motivate God? To select a bless a person for a blessing. Number one is, is love. When God loves a man, he will go to any length to bless that man. No matter what anybody is saying, Jesus said, My father loves me so much that. He has committed all things into my hand. Because he loves me. Everything. He gave it to me. John 3, 35. And in Romans 9, 13. Like we said before. God said, Jacob have I loved. But Esau have I hated. I loved him. And because of that, I blessed him. But as for Esau, I hated him. Who, who can question him? Nobody. God has favorites. If you doubt it, look at Moses. God was talking about Moses. He said, if there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known to him in a vision. I will only appear to him in a vision. I will speak to him in a dream. If the man does not sleep, he won't see me. So, but my servant Moses is not in that class. I speak to him mouth to mouth. And not in dark speeches or in parables. When God loves a man, he will look for him. To bless him. And you see, there are two vital things that can make God to really, really love you if you want him to love you. Two things. Well established in the scripture. Number one is humility. If you are so humble, ah, you become special to the Almighty God. Moses was described as the most, as the meekest man on earth. The Bible says God resists the proud, but rest. Pet the humble. For Almighty God to bow down to a person because of humility is a great virtue. The second thing that will make God really love you is, is if you are addicted to praise and worship. In fact, Jesus said the Father is seeking for such people. Love. We were created by God, but He deals with us differently. When God loves you, He will go to any length to bless you. There is a general love. I am for God so loved the world. That is a general love. But that is a special love. That is a love that we are talking about. 
The second thing that motivates God to select a person for his blessing is mercy. Mercy. Romans 9.15 says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy on. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion on. Mercy. Judas. Judas. Betrayed Jesus. He's a disciple. Peter. Denied Jesus. He's a disciple. Both of them committed abomination. But Peter enjoyed mercy. Jesus went after Peter and brought him back. He brought him back to himself. After that, I said, I go fishing. Jesus left the throne of grace in heaven and came down. Mercy. Two men were hanging on the cross. God went after one. And told that one. Say, today. Today. Thou shalt be with me in paradise. Wow. No water baptism. No going to church. No sanctification. No Holy Ghost baptism. No speaking in tongues. Do you want to query him? That man is enjoying now in heaven. Mercy. Two men left the presence of God in the Bible. Cain and Jonah. Cain. God ran after one and allowed the other to go away like that. That is mercy. Today, God of this ministry is going to show somebody mercy. If you are that man or that woman, say, Father, have mercy on me. Say it one more time. Say for the Lord. Number three, because of our time, let's go. It's favor. Psalm 102. Verse 13. Say, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her. Yeah, the set time is come. Favor. Favor. The angel said to Mary, Thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. She received the blessing because she was favored. Do you know the meaning of favor? Let me give you my own definition. My own definition of favor is God smiling at you. That's my own definition. God just smiling at you. Before you leave this ground today, God will smile at you. Number four is prayer. Things that motivate God to select a man for his blessing. Jabez prayed. 
Oh, thou that will bless me indeed. And enlarge my coast. And that thy hand might be with me. And keep me from evil. And the Bible says, and the Lord granted him all his requests. James 5.16 Say, the effectual father's prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Every day is God's day. But the day that you call upon heaven is your day. Somebody is going to call upon heaven today. And heaven will respond to you quickly. Number five is sacrifice. Sacrifice. Solomon gave God an unusual sacrifice. <laughs> and that night, God Himself appeared to him. Say, ask for anything. I give you a blank check. And the blessing upon that young man till today is still a testimony. Living a life of sacrifice will position you for his blessing. When Abraham showed God that he was ready to sacrifice his only beloved son, he was ready to sacrifice that boy. God said, this is, this is very unusual. And he spoke to Abraham. He said, Abraham, listen, listen, listen. Say, I swear by myself. Because you have done this. Say, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. And I teach. Shall be at the stars of heaven. And you shall also be a blessing to the nation. Sacrifice. If you don't want to don't want to live a life of sacrifice for the sake of the kingdom, blessing will be far away from you. If your giving is a normal giving, giving that does not pinch you hard, that is not sacrifice. God is not a beggar. Blessing will be far away from you. Number six. When you hate unrighteousness, it will motivate God to select you for his blessing. Hebrew 1 9 says, Because thou hast loved righteousness and you have hated iniquity, therefore, God, even thy God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness. The oil of blessing above thy fellow. That is, you are selected above your fellow because you hate iniquity. You cannot be swimming in the river of lying, in the river of anger, keeping malice, adultery, fornication. And you expect heaven to bless you. Let me give you the last one before we pray. But there are so many of them. But I'm going to stop here. The seventh one, which is very, very important, is the prayer of your man of God. It can motivate God to select you for his blessing. Every child of God must have a man of God that is speaking over his or her life. 
Your man, your man of God is the voice in your wilderness. Your prayer is very good. The prayer that you pray for is very good. But it is not the same with the prayer of your man of God. Because your man of God occupies a position of authority in the body of Christ. Your man of God may not be as smart as you are. He may not be as eloquent as you are. He may not be as educated as you are. In fact, he may even be younger than you. But he's still a man of God. He may not come from your village or from your tribe. But he's still a man of God. Your man of God may look uncivilized, unrefined, or not even popular. But he's still a man of God. His prayer over your life is very potent. John the Baptist was a raw man of God. His dressing was uncivilized. His food strange. He lives in the wilderness. John the Baptist was a type of man of God that many in our generation will not want to vote for or be close with. But the Bible says there was a man sent from God. His name is John the Baptist. He was a man but it came from God. The prayer of your man of God can stop your labor and put you into the arena of his blessing. The man of God that you criticize and backbite in the secret cannot be a blessing to you in the open. The man of God that you are always speaking on his mistakes cannot be a blessing to you. I always tell people be on a safer side by constantly encouraging your man of God and praying for him than for you to start pulling him down. Others may be speaking evil against the man of God. Please, I beg you, don't join them. It is dangerous to do so. God does not joke with his vessel. I know the case of a woman like that. She said some things against our Father and the Lord. Our Father and the Lord did not even know. How do I go to know? She ran to me for prayers. And she showed me the marks in the dream. Some huge people came. Lie down. Fear. 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 What did I do? You spoke against my son. Who is this your son? Olukoya. Fear. Ah. When she woke up, and they, and, and they, they told her, go and apologize. If not, we shall be back again. So she came to me. This woman is a very big woman. And there is one thing I want you to advise, to advise you on. When it comes to the issue of a man of God, if you put it into practice, your blessings will double. 
If you have not been doing it, start doing it. And you will see the hand of God fighting your battle. Never go to a man of God empty handed. Never go to a man of God empty handed. Some will say, hey, they are using style, style to beg. Your heart needs deliverance. God will always bless his servant. It is not them, it is you that heavens will open for. The only thing that some people know how to bring to a man of God is bad dream. Spirit husband. Curses. Somebody pushing. That is the only thing they bring to the man of God. The prayer of your man of God can motivate God to pick you out for his blessing. Jesus, the pastor of Peter, he said, Peter, the devil desires to have you and to sift you like a witch. So, but I have prayed for you. And because I have prayed for you, the agenda, the desire of hellfire over you is cancelled. If I be a man of God, and if you believe that I am sent from God, I decree into your life now every witchcraft agenda against your destiny is cancelled forever. Let your amen rule at all. I'm going to stop here. You need to do three things. Number one, connect your heart to heaven. Number two, desire is blessing. Number three, believe in his prophet that he has sent to you. Connect your heart to heaven. Desire is blessing. Believe his prophet that he has sent to you. I would like you to bow down your head. Bow down your head. And begin to ask the Lord. Father, let today be a day that I will always remember. A day that I will always remember. Speak to the Lord now. There are people here this morning that what your destiny has been waiting for is what is happening here today. God may bypass others. But it must not pass me by. My season of laughter, my time of breakthrough is now. Speak to the Lord now. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Lay your right hand on your chest, on your seat. Your right hand on your chest. And sit very well now. Sit very well. 
sit like, sit like a soldier. Declare this over your own life. Say this loud and clear. With fire and with power in your voice. Say, Oh God, arise. Don't remove your hand from your chest. Say, Oh God, arise. Open my book of remembrance. See where you want to me. Don't stand up. Sit down, please. Oh, little lady, for it. Oh God, arise! And open my book of remembrance. See where you want to me. In the name. Jesus. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Oh God, arise. Open my book of remembrance. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.